Hi guys, welcome back for another video. I'm Jess and I'm one of the creative designers here at Sizzix. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the Gardenia flower from Chapter 2 2022. I'm going to show you guys how to piece it all together, how you can use it in your makes, whether you're doing home decor or weddings or anything like that, it's going to be perfect with our lovely crepe paper. So make sure to comment and like and I'll be sharing with a discount code at the end of the video for you guys as well. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna start making straight away and I'm gonna be using the gardenia flower today. So that is a thinlet with four dies in it. And these are the metal pieces that you get. And this is the kind of flower that it's gonna make up when you make a really full flower. But I'm gonna show you how you can make an even smaller one and you can change up the look and feel of the flower just by creating the petals in a different way. So I have pre-cut most of my pieces using our crepe paper. So our crepe paper packs, are really great. You have multiple colors. There's three different kinds and it depends on what colors you want to use. They're 150% stretch as well, so that's great. So I'm gonna be using the sort of yellow color and I have pre-cut, like I said, so you need quite a few petals, but the great thing about the crepe paper is you can cut multiple layers at once. So I tend to cut these two strips um, at least two to three times. This is your leaf, so we can move that to the side. And then this is the bottom section. So you want about three of those die cut, but I'm gonna leave that to the end because I may or may not add those because that is what creates that really full looking flower. I potentially want something a little bit smaller because I'm going to make a buttonhole for a wedding or a, a boutonniere, I think you call it. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can change it up depending on um, what you wanna use it for because it could easily be used for different things once we've pieced it all together. So we've got all the petals. I'm just gonna create my little pile. So I've got my smaller ones on one side and my larger ones on the other. So I'm gonna be using hot glue as well. So using a hot glue gun just makes it a little bit easier. And you can sculpt these in multiple different ways. You can do it just with your fingers. You can do it with a paper sculpting kit and a fold and form tool. So if you're doing it with your fingers, you actually just wanna take it between your two thumbs and just bend it round slightly. You don't wanna over sculpt because then you're gonna stretch the crepe paper too much. So just pull it ever so slightly. If you wanted to do it with a fold and form tool, I'll show you with a larger, um, petal. So I could take this and if I wanted to curve back the edges of the petal, if I just pop that through that fold and form tool, so just gently prise it through and then pull backwards, that's going to create that curve of that petal if that's the kind of shape that you want. And then you can take your fingers and do that and then you've got the two sort of um, shapes so you've got that one going this way and then one going that way as well another option also is to take our paper sculpting kit like i said so you can just take one of the balls and just give it a little bit of a rub and that's going to give you a little bit more shape and then i would probably take it in my fingers as well so they all do the same similar job they just create an ever so slightly different shape and texture so I'm just gonna take a few in my fingers just because this is one of the quickest methods and then with the larger ones, I'd probably use my fold and form as well. So we're gonna build up these really quickly and we can start to piece them together. And it's up to you how many you actually want, depends on how full your flower is. So I tend to take a section first. So I take one petal and I just give it a little twist almost like a loop. So I've got like a um, section that's rolled and then I just take some hot glue and just close that up. So this is gonna be the center of that flower and that's what I'm going to work around as I go. And once you've got a few down, it's super quick to build it up. So I'm literally just gonna take a little bit of glue on every single petal and just add it around. And it's just gonna get easier and easier as you go. You can use um, our Express Glue 
or a PVA glue if you prefer. If you don't like using hot glue, um, that's perfectly fine. You just need to allow it to dry um, every now and again. This way, I just find it a little bit quicker. So you can see we're already starting to build up that flower. So I can just keep going. I'm gonna add all of the smaller ones first before I move on to the larger ones. And I wanna show you guys how you can add some shading to your petals as well, which I tend to like to do with the larger ones because those are the ones that you're gonna see on the outside of the flower a little more. You just gotta have to be relatively patient with building up your flowers. It does take a little bit of time, but I find it actually really therapeutic because you kind of get in a rhythm and it's really quite easy to do once you've done those center ones and it's really easy to just pop on tiny little bits of glue and build it up and it builds up really quickly. So I briefly talked about the crepe paper as well. Um, before we got going. There are three different colored packs, like I said. Um, I'm using the Serenity pack, because I'm using this pale yellow, like an olive green, and I have got like a, a light orange that's also in that set, but there's three different colored sets. So whichever one suits you best or suits your color scheme best. If you are making this for a wedding, then hopefully there's some options in there for you. And what I love about crepe paper flowers is they're never gonna die. So particularly if you are making for a special occasion, like a party or a wedding or something like that, you're gonna have it forever. And I know a lot of people spend a lot of money preserving the flowers from their wedding. This is a great way of doing it. Um, sort of preserving it straight from the off, which is really nice. Okay, I think I'm quite happy with the amount of small petals that I have. You can see it's already really built up. I could stop there and have a really closed flower if I wanted to, but I'm gonna to start to add the bigger ones on there. So if I wanted to, I can start to sculpt those. So just popping that through that slit on that fold and form tool, pulling it through and then bending back the petal and giving it a sculpt. And you don't have to do this with every one. You could probably do it with just your outer petals. So I'll probably do it with about four of these. And then maybe do the rest just with my fingers. Because we might want those a little bit more closed rather than more open. And it's super easy. If you've never done flower making before, I always really like working with crepe paper because you can get better and better each time, but it's really quite quick to pick up. What I am going to do with some of these, particularly the outer ones, I think, is I'm going to take some Tim Holtz Distress Oxide, some of the Ranger Distress Oxide, and I'm going to take our um, multi-tool with the blending head on. I'm just going to pop that just ever so slightly in there, and I'm just going to do a little bit of shading, just to add a little bit of dimension. I probably should have done this before I sculpted all my petals, but don't worry too much because if you do that and you feel like your petal needs more sculpting, you can just go in and just give it a pinch with your fingers and it's absolutely fine. So again, just a little bit, just on both sides and I'll just add a little bit of dimension. I'm just gonna do it with the outer petals that I've got here. But you could do it with every single petal if it is for something like those big occasions, like a wedding, something like that. You might wanna really take your time and do every single petal and make them look really realistic, which is what the shading does, in my opinion. It makes them look more real, um, which is a really nice touch. Okay, and then we can just put them back into shape and they will have that shape that we've already kind of started to create. Like so. So I'm going to start with those ones that aren't shaded first and just carry on building up that flower. So building around, you don't need quite as many as the bigger flower 
the bigger petal, sorry, because they're going to show up a lot easier than the smaller ones. So again, just building them up bit by bit. And do about five or six of the non-shaded ones just to fill out the edge. Probably gonna do one more and then we'll do the shaded ones on the outside. You see, just by adding that shading to the outside, it just means that that's what we're going to see as a whole. So it just adds that extra, extra touch, I think. There you go. And this is where you can push your petals down and kind of cover up any sections that you've made a bit messy because that's okay because if these petals are a little bit lower down than the rest, it just means that the flower is going to be more open as you go. So we're almost there. I think just the last two. And I'm going to leave it at that with this last one. There we go. And you have a really gorgeous flower, but does look very different to the one that I showed you at the beginning. Here we are on the paper. So you can see how you can create a completely different flower just by sculpting. So this is sculpted more where I took that fold and form tool and really curved over those edges. And then I added these three elements, which I tend to cut three of and just place them around the base. So they just sit around the base of that flower, just about three of them. And that'd make it a lot more open with these bigger petals at the bottom. Obviously for a buttonhole, I want it a little bit closer because it's going to be quite a small element on someone's jacket, okay? So the only thing that I want to do now is I'm going to think about adding leaves and things, but this needs a stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sharp tool. Just don't worry about your flower too much. You can press it down. Just make a small hole. I've just used some uh, tweezers, but you could use a uh, die pick or something like that. And if you do have to scrunch your flower a little bit, don't worry because that makes it look more realistic. I'm just going to take some wire just some florist wire trim that and just add a little bit of glue I tend to poke it right into the top of the glue and then just pop it in there and you can't see it once I have put it in it's just glued there and you can probably run your finger over it once it's cooled a little bit just to smooth everything down and then we've got it on a stem, okay? If you are worried about any glue sections you've um, got that are a bit messy, you can take some uh, florist tape, which I've done here on this one. So I just added some florist tape and rolled that all the way down. And this one is exactly like those that other one, but just the center section without those medium or larger petals. So just the smaller size petals. And that's what I'm gonna use for the main base of my uh, buttonhole, okay? Then we've got to think about the leaf. So I am going to die cut these just so I can show you how easily they die cut. So this is going to be two. So you want two of the same leaf. I'm only going to make one leaf, but I'm going to place them back to back. And I can cut these both at the same time, particularly if you're using something like our fold away machine, because it has amazing pressure, this one. And it's super handy if you are strapped for space. So if I pop that there. I'm going to cut two. Bear in mind when you are cutting crepe paper, you need to cut along the grain, okay? So when you go to sculpt it, it needs to be along the grain. So I couldn't cut my my leaf that way along a piece of crepe paper and have the grain going that way because then it wouldn't sculpt correctly. If I pulled it, it'd just make a really, really long leaf. So I want it to be that way. So when I pull it, it's going to create a nice cup shape and roll that through. And then if I move this to one side, we've got our two leaves, all of beautifully cut out. 
and I can just separate those. Oh, if I had long nails, there we go. <laughs> and then we can take some more of that florist wire. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bend just with my fingers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use Express Glue because I want it to be nice and soft. I'm just gonna squeeze the Express Glue and I'm gonna cover the top portion of that wire. Oh, oh no, there we go. I tend to do this just because I can be a bit more precise of where the glue's going and I don't add too much. And this is gonna be like the center of that leaf. So we're gonna place it along where the center stem would be. Then what I'm gonna do is just add a thin layer of glue around the outside. And you could even put it like you would the veins of the leaf. And then we're gonna layer that up perfectly over the top, okay? So make sure it's all in line with that glue. And it gives you a really sturdy flower that once it is dry, it means that you can manipulate and bend the flower, uh, the leaf, sorry, and then you can just pull it if you want to, to make it slightly more sculpted. It's gonna be a little bit tougher to do because you have got that layer of glue in between, but it means that you can bend and manipulate the leaf, which is really, really nice. So now we can think about piecing our buttonhole together. So I've got my leaf, I've got my two flowers. What I am also going to do is just apply or add some uh, fake foliage as well. So I'm gonna use my leaf as my base. And I'm just going to layer up a few little bits of fake foliage just to fill it out a little bit more, okay? And I'm just gonna layer them up just with a little bit of glue. If you are worried about the hot glue, like I said, um, for this section I would use hot glue, but you can use our uh, like silicon thimbles and things like that to protect your fingers if you are a little bit concerned. And you can just keep building up. I tend to work on top of a silicone mat like our glue gun accessory mat, because then if anything does get stuck to it, it just peels away because it's a, a silicon material, which is really nice. I'm gonna add one to the back. And you'll see how quickly this will all come together. I'm just gonna place, hold it down and then place one more at the front, I think. And then I'm gonna trim them all down and wrap it with some ribbon so um, it's all concealed, any of this mess that we've made down the bottom. Okay. Okay. So just give that a firm press, make sure it's all attached. Okay, then we can trim off some of the bottom bits down here just with a wire cutter and it should just trim all of the sections, give it a bit of a wiggle if you need to. We'll get there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then I'm just gonna finish that bottom bit off just with a little bit of ribbon, because especially for a wedding, it's nice to finish it off. Although I'm worried I haven't got any scissors. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> you just wanna add some hot glue and just wrap this around. And kind of close up that bottom bit as well as you can. Okay, it doesn't have to be Perfect. We can always pop some glue inside and underneath and kind of hold it down and wrap that around. 
try and pull it as tight as you can when you're doing this bit because that's how it'll look its neatest. Okay, have I got any scissors down here? Potentially not. I'm sure I'll be able to find some and then we can trim that off. There we go. I managed to locate some guys. <laughs> and then just finish it off like so. Okay, just make sure it's all finished. There we go. And then I'd probably put a pin or a safety pin or something on the back so that can be attached onto a jacket for a buttonhole. But if you wanted to, you could also use it as table decoration. So I could just add that to the front of a napkin and it could act as a napkin ring. So if I just tied that up, I'm just going to tie that at the back, like so, just with a knot, and just wrap it around. So this is just string, but you could use um, a ribbon as well. And then it also works as a nice napkin holder or a napkin ring as well to decorate. And it's definitely something that um, wedding guests could take home with them. And like I said, keep forever because it is crepe paper and full foliage, so it's never gonna die. But it could also be um, used as your buttonhole. So you imagine it on a jacket or something like that. It definitely could work. You could even build up the flowers even more, add more foliage, and you could make little tiny um, bouquets or wedding decorations decorations that you could pop in flower in vases as well but this could be used for any party or you could make like say the whole bouquet and give it as a gift or something like that for mother's day or anything like that so there's so many options um but that is that gorgeous gardenia flower and how you can make it up and what you can achieve with it and um, if you guys do want to check out that dye or anything that i've used today like the crepe paper or anything like that definitely check out the Sizzix website and make sure to use that code jess20 and that'll give you some money off of everything that i've used today that you can treat yourself to in your baskets um definitely leave a comment and a like for me as well if you recreate any of the flowers for any occasion that you've got coming up i'd love to see it across all of our social medias um, using that hashtag my making story um, and check out all the other inspiration that we've got over on our facebook youtube and instagram um, so i think that's everything from me today guys i really hope you enjoyed following along and making those gorgeous crepe paper flowers i'll see you in the next one but until then stay safe and keep crafting thanks bye